Okay, so in this new project I've created, uh, we'll be messing around with the accelerometer uh, touches and we'll play around with some actions as well. Those are things like fade out. And uh, let's dive right into this. So I, I'm, again, I'm just messing around with the Cocos 2D template and I'm going to go into the initialize statement here and just take out what currently exists. And you know, we can go ahead and steal a little bit of code from our previous lesson, which I'll just slide into view here. Uh, and you know what, actually while I have it open, um, I did add this uh, little bit of code into the example file uh, that I didn't talk about in the lesson, which is just anchor point. And uh, you generally you're gonna wanna leave this at uh, 0.5 and 0.5 so you don't actually have to do anything. But uh, that just centers the anchor point right in the middle of the, uh, the sprite and if that was zero for example that would be along the x-axis to the far left if it was one it'd be to the far right so along the y zero would be at the bottom of it and one would be at the top but you generally don't want to mess around with that because it can you know it, it affects kind of where your um, object scales to or rotates from so it's your pivot point if you're familiar with that term okay so let's go and we'll just paste this in here uh, if you remember from the previous lesson, we uh, we set up this CC sprite called uh, logo, and I actually already had that pasted in there from before. Let's go ahead and just make this uh, ball because so you're using a logo this time. Let's go ahead and uh, change things up a little bit. So now I'll make this be ball equals CC sprite sprite with file. I've already added in here a file called ball.png. Here we go. And so now the warning is, or the error is that there's no such thing as logo. Uh, this doesn't need a tag, and really for just what we're doing now, we don't need a Z depth to it. And then finally, ball dot position. And let's go ahead and set this to the right in the middle of the stage. So use the width and height of our size here. And now this should be fine for either the iPad or iPhone. It's just going to always be in the middle there. And then we want to write self.isAccelerometer enabled. This will be yes. We do want to enable that. And then come down here outside of the init method, and we're going to just write void. And then as soon as you start typing accelerometer, you should get this um, all the code hint for filling that in. Then we just want to do our opening and closing brackets. And now we are set up to um, get some variables called acceleration.x, acceleration.y, acceleration.z for how the device is uh, tilted. And so just for starters, let's put in a CC log statement here that just says acceleration values are, and we can do x colon and do the percentage sign F for uh, returning the float value. So we'll see that in just a moment. There's our Y one, Z percentage F. And then close off that with quotes. And then we have to put in here what those variables are. So acceleration X, acceleration dot Y, and then finally acceleration dot Z and finish this off with a semicolon and I think we should be good to go. Why am I still getting an error here though? That would be because, can I find this? There we go. Okay, so now remember this value goes in place of that one, that one, for that one, and so on. And now uh, let's just give this a quick test. <clears throat> I've got a uh, my iPad plugged in here. Your, it could be your iPhone or iPod. And here, give it a minute. It'll install here. I've got the device laying uh, flat on the table, and you can see it is returning all these values. So if I were to uh, tilt the device up from well, basically where the cord is plugged into, you can see I'm, getting, I'm starting to get higher values along the uh, for the Y value there. And then if I were to tilt it the opposite way, okay, so picking up from that other end, I start getting negative numbers. Um, and these are these are very small float values. Uh, obviously now they're really small because it's again laying flat. 
But let's use those for uh, playing around with the position of the ball. So let me stop this. And I'll put ball.position equals. And remember, I can do CG point make, or I can go that quicker route and just write CCP. Okay. And uh, it's going to want from here the X and the Y. So what we'll do is write ball dot position oops dot x and then we'll add to that and then I'm going to put this in parentheses the acceleration dot y value and I'm going to multiply this by let's go with 20 for right now this will be kind of quick and then for the uh, y value let's just make this be for right now ball dot position dot y so what it currently is already and now, uh, if we test this, we should get back some good results. Where when I do that same tilting that I was doing before, it uh, the ball the ball should slide across the screen. And sure enough, it does. Okay, so did everybody get a chance to go? Wait a minute, what's wrong with my uh, device? How come this is going so choppy? Well, there's actually a much better way of uh, doing this other than just putting this uh, or changing the position directly inside of the accelerometer uh, method here. Let's go and create a variable that's going to store, at least for right now, just that. And what we'll do is create a uh, method and we'll schedule it to run at uh, 60 frames per second that um, we'll just basically add on that value to. Um, the x value and this isn't too tough what we're just going to do is write uh, void update ball this is very similar to the uh, method oops, we had in the last tutorial that was called update logo and we're going to schedule this guy right up here so we shall write self school i cannot type today can i Schedule and then this is going to be selector update. I was hoping it would go ahead and put that in there for us. Guess not. Update ball. Don't forget to put that colon afterwards. And then the interval shall be 1.0f divided by 60.0f. Close that off. And that should be good. Okay, so now let's take this guy out of here. And then it doesn't know what the acceleration that y is at that point, of course. And in fact, we're not going to do any of that uh, <clears throat> any calculation in there anyway. Well, what we'll do is replace the replace this with a variable called a tilt horizontal and as you can see, I might have worked that just a little bit because already in our header file I added in this uh, tilt horizontal value. Um, I was playing around with this having being being a float value. I'm going to change this back to being an integer value. And keep in mind that integers are those nice little whole numbers. Okay, so zero and one are integers. Zero point five is not an integer. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll actually make use of that kind of nicely because uh, since we get so many of those kind of fractional numbers for the uh, acceleration values. Uh, and then after we do our multiplication, in many cases we'll get 0 times 20, which is just going to equal 0 again, which is actually kind of good because depending on what we're moving on the screen, we might not want it to subtly be moving when the device is just st sitting there kind of even. Okay. All right, uh, but let's continue going here. So what we want to do is take uh, tilt horizontal and make this equal to the acceleration dot y times 20 and let's go ahead and log this just so we can see oh. let's say tilt horizontal is and then don't forget you need to put that percentage sign i this time not f because it's an integer value and then there we go that should be fine and I'm trying to think if there's anything else here that we want to do. Well, not at the moment. Let's um, let's test this out, and I think it should run a lot smoother. It was really rather chunky before. Yep, 
sure enough, a lot better. So, okay, hopefully you guys are playing the home game and uh, trying that out for yourself. That is much nicer. Now, of course, the only problem is, is that the ball can eventually just go totally off the stage. And we might as well trap it on there because we can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the... Uh, the window size again and a CG uh, size variable and that too is something you probably best to just put into a variable. You know what, let's do that. Uh, we'll call this screen width. You know what, since we're doing it, let's go ahead and make the screen height as well. That way what we can do is get rid of that. Yeah, size not width. There we go. And then down here we can use that. So it'll be if the ball dot position dot x is greater than or equal to zero okay so as long as it's on stage and not too far to the left because otherwise it would be a negative number and as long as the ball dot position dot x is less than or equal to the screen width okay remember that because I'm using the iPad it's 1024 in this particular case so as long as those both conditions are true, okay, and that's what that double ampersand sign is. It just means that that's and. If you wanted one or the other, okay, so that's an or, all right, there's two pipes like that. In this case, if this was true or this was true, but we want them both to be true, and then the ball is allowed uh, to move around. And if you test that out, uh, it will work, but what can possibly happen is the ball will just get stuck at the very end of the stage because it will, this x value will actually end up going over the screen width or under the uh, zero value. And then in that case, this is no longer uh, a true statement, so it will, um, it will not run back the other way. In which case, too, you could do something like, well, you, we could also, you now yeah, there's a couple ways of doing this, but let's just write <laughs> the way I'm thinking of right now. We can put an else if statement here that says else if, and then do the reverse of this. So if the ball dot position dot x is ever less than zero, then what we'll do is make it so that it equals zero. And we'll also put in here else if ever greater than the screen width. And we'll just make it be the screen width. Okay, so does it make sense? Hopefully it does. And let's try it out. So I'm publishing this. And it kind of, of course, bangs against the side of the screen because, you know, if you don't stop tilting it, that's what this is going to run up against that, that uh, kind of virtual wall there. But it does keep the ball going back and forth along, or horizontally along the screen. And is everybody ready for a little test? Uh, go ahead and create a variable called tilt vertically and implement that. Uh, you might. Notice uh, that you need to make a little bit of a change versus what you had before. So I'll give you a sec. Three, two, one. Pause the video if you feel like. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So this code is uh, definitely all the same. All right, just using that screen height that we had before. Of course, you're now working with the y-axis. So all those other kind of miscellaneous calculations that we had like uh, ball position or you know making it be zero making it be the screen width are now on the other side of the comma so all that goes on over here and there's the other one zero 
Uh, but where we need to play around a bit is with uh, the tilt vertically uh, variable because the uh, the iPad is or your device is usually already tilted toward you. You're rarely looking directly over top of it, like kind of like holding a tray uh, with food on it. That's not really how you hold your device. Uh, so this is what worked out, this is what I think worked out for me, uh, just putting in that 0.6 there and adding that to what the acceleration dot X is, and then you just do that in multiplication like normal. And I'll go ahead and show you kind of how that came out. So the ball doesn't too quickly sink down that way. And then as I tilt this up, like that, I start to get it to go back that way. So that, and I don't think that's too much of a, a tilt range in that direction, just depending on what you, of course, what your game's doing. And then, as you can see, everything tilts fine, you know, how we originally had it before. Well, I guess that's get, getting kind of glary for you guys, but um, sure enough, you can see it's doing its thing. And feel free to play around with uh, whatever that number is. And if you do uh, want to go and make this a float value instead, you might get some slightly different results. Uh, whereas, you know, because it essentially kind of rounds up with that uh, integer value there. So anyway, um, that does it for the accelerometer. All right, so next up, let's go back up to the init method, and we're gonna write in here self dot is touch enabled equals yes, and just by doing so, we are now set up, or this layer is now set up to detect uh, touches beginning, moving, ending, or canceling, and we'll talk about those first three there. Touches canceled is um, kind of a rare rarity, and. Um, I think you guys will have plenty to do with just the touches began. So as soon as you type in CC here, uh, you might actually begin to see touches began. And go ahead and just get all three of these in here real quick. Moved. By the way, if, you've, if you're kind of <laughs> editing something where you've already got the tail end of it like this, and you hit return, you end up get like kind of doubling what you've already got. Uh, what you can do is, let's try that again. Come over here, just hit uh, escape, and then you just type as is, and we'll try to fill that in there. And then ended. So these are all kind of obvious. Began, moved, ended, when you lift up your finger. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy in uh, some code for you guys that will convert uh, where your finger's at and then um, ultimately gives you this uh, location value and uh, this is a just a, a CG point so it's got a um, an X and a Y value to it so it's a struct and um, when you get one of these guys a CG point it's got with it this X property and Y property to it and that's ultimately what we end up using um, for our ball positioning, which is obviously that's where I was going with this if I didn't make it obvious before. So uh, now if we were to touch the screen, the ball dot position is gonna equal location dot X or location dot Y. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy in this code um, for the touches began, touches ended. And then it's up to you guys as to, you know, if you wanna put that in for all three of them or one of them or you know, you know what I'm saying. Do what you will at that point. Just know that ultimately you end up with this location.x or location.y value. And let's cut back over here and we'll watch it uh, on screen if I haven't already closed that out. I think I did. Okay, so there's that ball again. And sure enough, following my finger and then of course when I let go doo -doo -doo, it falls back down or you know it's again it's, it's all dependent on how the device is tilted at that moment so mm -hmm. I'm just propped up like that the ball just falls down okay I figured out a good way to good place to take this uh, part of the lesson I'm gonna create a, a boolean variable in here which are these guys are always uh, useful you can actually go with bool 
in all caps, or like I had before. And uh, let's go uh, make this variable uh, be called, are we touching the screen? Quite literal, isn't it? Uh, by default, these Boolean variables are gonna be no, okay, which makes sense if we're kind of asking a question of it, are we touching the screen? No. But when we step over here and say, touches begin, are we touching the screen? We'll make this equal yes, okay. And then, let me get rid of that. Are we touching the screen equals no. And what I wanna do is take all of our code for updating the ball and make it so that if, uh, this will only run if you are not touching the screen. So we'll say if, are we touching the screen? If it equals no, and you gotta do two equal signs there. Get rid of that col um, semicolon. And then we wanna encapsulate all this other code in opening and closing brackets. So it'll look a little kind of weird at first, but there's our opening one. And then scroll all the way down to the bracket right before the end of the entire method. And everything should be all good again. And if you want, we can bump this out so it does look nice and pretty for you guys. And let's see what that does for us. So we're gonna publish this out. Okay, so now uh, the ball is no longer gonna be finding against um, my finger. It's just gonna stay exactly where it is until I let go again, and then it can go ahead and drop, which I was kind of doing before, but you might have noticed a little bit of a wiggle going on uh, just because that uh, this updating was still going. Now, here's the fun thing. Uh, let's go ahead and just take this off and put it over here for right now. And I'm gonna put a little note that just says, uh, detecting just one touch. And then for our touches moved, we'll convert this over to detecting more than one touch. Say more, or we'll just say detecting two touches. And uh, what we'll do is we'll make it so that the ball ends up in the middle of where our two fingers are, which kind of looks like you're sort of levitating the ball. One thing that you're gonna need to do is go over to your, to your app delegate and paste in uh, those two lines, you might even want to paste in that third comment there, that uh, just basically sets it up so that our view um, has hey, set multiple touch enabled to yes. And uh, let's go ahead and do this too. Let me copy out these lines and then go over here and put, um, actually, I'll do it above this. I'll say, don't forget to change or to these lines to your and there you go okay are we ready uh, what we're gonna do instead of let me stop this from running instead of just the touching uh, the, looking out for the touches of any object. This time around, we're gonna set up an NS array. We're gonna get into arrays later on um, in this lesson, so I don't want you to think about them too much, but basically they're a variable that stores multiple variables, okay? So uh, now we're looking for all objects, and then we're gonna put an if statement in here that says, if the touch array count is greater than one, okay, so that means that inside of this array variable, there's the count, Okay, the number of variables inside of that, things you're storing in there. If it's uh, greater than one, then what we will do is essentially the same thing that we had before, but um, now we're gonna make a, a UI touch. Okay, so we had that same thing before for uh, finger one, and then that will be the object at index zero. So again, it's looking at this array, so our object that's at zero, and we're gonna do the same thing for finger two. That's the object at one. And then uh, I'm just gonna keep the cut and paste action going here, because it's a little easier, or a little faster to explain and paste at the same time. Uh, then, once again, we're making a CG point, so this is gonna be our X or Y location for point one, and this will be finger one, location and view, 
where, the, where it's at basically in the view. And, and then the end, ultimately, we, we take our point one and point two and convert them to this uh, OpenGL point. And again, all we're ending up with is going to be a value of point one dot x and point one dot y. So, and of course, we get the same thing for point two as well. And we shall use those in this way. We're going to write ball dot position is going to equal, here's our CC point. So again, this is just ultimately an X or Y value that we get from this. And let me go, go ahead and close off this entire thing so that we don't get too cute and confused with the parentheses that I'm putting in here. So I'm going to take point one dot X and then I'm going to subtract from that inside of these parentheses uh, the difference between point one and point two dot x. Okay, so try to bear with me here. All right. And then I actually want half that value. Okay, so we're going to go <laughs> and put in one more set of parentheses. So divide that by two. And then we'll just go with, um, for right now, whatever point one dot y equals for the y location of it. And if we do that, it should appear like the ball is going to be between my two fingers. And what happened to our iChat window? Our video preview. Okay, so here comes my hand, putting down two fingers, and I'm gonna just move them around like so. And it doesn't matter with the order of my fingers, okay, so I can put down this one first and then this one, as long as I'm moving them around here. Whoa, looks like I'm levitating. So uh, <laughs> to really kind of make that look more levitation-ish. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just do that same thing for the Y as well. So, oops. Keeps wanting to put in that Y zero afterwards. There we go. And now let's try this one more time. So there's the ball just going down, by the way. And then put my fingers on there. And oh, look at that. And I, I know it's looking a little choppy. Probably on y'all's end in the video, but actually this is really smooth on screen here. In fact, I'm kind of making it a little choppy myself just because I don't want to tip over the, the iPad. I'm not a big fan of these, these guys right here. <laughs> doesn't seem to stay up, especially if you got a three-year-old. Okay, so that's our little uh, levitation effect. And uh, it at least give you two examples of uh, detecting either two touches or just one touch in there. Okay, what I'm going to do is pause this for just a moment. And I kind of want to tinker around with um, one or two little th things I saw as I was, I was playing with this. And then I'll come back with hopefully a little polished version of this example. Okay, uh, I made a few tweaks that uh, I think are gonna be helpful. Uh, one thing is, uh, go ahead and put in, if we are touching the screen equals no, so if you're not already touching it, then we'll set that to be yes, and that's not the main reason we're doing this, but the main reason is so that um, we will initially put the ball where your first finger touches, okay, or fingers in that case, it'll kind of whoever gets to it first, uh, then that won't run again. I noticed that that's kind of what was mostly causing a problem before. Is like sometimes the ball would kind of wiggle back and forth. Uh, finally, as well, you're going to put in here, are we touching the screen equals yes, anytime that you're moving it, okay? So that will always kind of keep that as is. And then the only time we shut that off is, of course, at the very end here. And then we just don't do anything. So you don't... Um, no matter where you are when you end, you just kind of end. All we do is we just reactivate the, uh, the accelerometer and, and that stuff.
And I think I'm done talking about that for now. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, some actions. All right, so I'm back over here in the header file, and I'm gonna go ahead and set up a couple methods that we're gonna create. One is called scale up, and is called scale up, and the other one will be called scale down, and that way we are ready to set these up back over here in our implementation file and I guess just after our touches here let's go ahead and paste in scale up and scale down and inside these two methods are where I'm gonna put a couple very simple to use actions for us and you'll see what these are in just a moment I'm gonna write CC action and I'm gonna call this action up action and this will equal CC scale to action with duration. I'm going to put in uh, 2.0 F here for two seconds. And then the scale value, which is going to be times four. Okay. So just like in our uh, earlier project where we had uh, logo dot scale equals one, in this case, we're going to use. Uh, as a schedule, we're going to make that be scale equals four, so that's four times its uh, current uh, appearance. And then we'll dive down here. We actually need to um, run this action, so we're going to put in here a ball, run action, and then up action. And how simple is that? Uh, now, when we test this guy out, uh, we should see it just. Um, so oh, you know what? <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. We actually need to call this method here, uh, and, that, and we're going to do that uh, right here. Self scale up. I'm sorry. Actually, this will be the scale down one. Let's go up here for a second. So when we touch the screen, we'll make it scale up. Okay, let's try that again. And you know what? For this, I can uh, I can just test in the uh, simulator. In fact, I kind of could have been doing that before. It just wouldn't have shown me any of the accelerometer stuff. So I'm going to press down here, and uh, I can let go, obviously. It doesn't matter. And sure enough, it uh, scales up. And hey, look at that. All that uh, stuff that I had before is still working as well. Uh, let's quit out of that. Let's go ahead and do a similar action for scaling this down. And this is really just the same exact code again, but uh, I'll just change the action name so it's uh, down action, down action, action with duration. We'll make that also be two seconds. We'll just put that back down at two again. I mean at one again, I'm sorry. Click. And as soon as I let go, it's going to go back, right back down again. So uh, in this uh, case, at least it doesn't try to continue uh, the previous action in there. All right. But I don't know if that's always going to be the case with everything. So let's do this. Let's teach you guys how to add a tag to one of these guys. So you can go up action dot tag equals one, 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 right? And then you could also come down here. And write ball stop action by tag. And again, you run into that problem of what number did I put in there? But uh, there we go. So uh, that could be used to uh, stop that uh, action by its tag. And it's, it's pretty uh, pretty darn convenient, I think. Uh, as, you, as you saw, though, we didn't actually have to do that with um, that previous, previous example. But it's not going to hurt us if we uh, left that in there. So, and not seeing any warnings over that way. By the way, I did take rid of, I did get rid of the, uh, or I commented out the uh, log statements for those acceleration values just so that they're not constantly streaming down there. So let's go ahead and set up uh, another one of those. Let me just put a little note here that the um, this isn't actually. Just FYI, and uh, at the very beginning of our file, after we 
initialize everything. Let's go ahead and write CC rotate by. You can imagine what we'll do here. I'm going to call this action rotate ball, and this will be CC rotate by. It's going to be an action with the duration. Let's make the duration kind of long. We'll go with the 8.0 f, so it's eight seconds, and then the angle will be 360. So it's going to rotate all the way around. And now check this out. Here's another action. CC repeat forever, and I'm just going to call this action repeat rotate and this will be equal to cc repeat forever and it's an action with an action is that blowing your mind so we're going to put the rotate ball in there and then ball run action repeat rotate and uh, isn't that clever? So now, uh, when we run this guy, oh, look at that, rotating. Okay, so I'll click somewhere. While I'm holding down here, and by the way, if you are in the simulator and you want to simulate two touches, you hold down the option key. And if you want to move those two fingers, hold down the shift key at the same time. Oh, isn't that cool? I should have got I should have used like a planet or something, I feel like. It'd be a little bit neater in this example. Some sort of rotating moon. So anyway, that um that's the very basic thing you can do with actions. We can also set up a sequence as well. So let's try that uh, next. And we'll just go ahead and put this down below what we just did. Let's call this uh, CC fade two. And I'll call the action fade in. This will equal CC fade two. Action with duration. We'll make this be so it's kind of obvious. 1.0 f. Oops. I think you can just get away with numbers here too. By the way, you don't have to put the 0.0 f all the time. Kind of got used to doing that though. Uh, and then the, we're gonna make the opacity be zero for the. Actually, I should make this be fade out first. Go ahead and copy this line. Make that one fade in. And this time around, 255. Come down here, CC sequence. So we'll call this, uh, how about pulse sequence? Equals. CC sequence, action one is going to be our fade out, and two will be our fade in. And we can also do the same thing that we had up here. Let's just go ahead and be lazy. We'll copy it out. So CC repeat forever. And we'll call this repeat pulse. And CC repeat forever. Action with action. And that'll be our pulse sequence. And then once again, we come down here and we can write ball run action repeat pulse. And of course, too, don't forget that you could also add a tag to. Any one of these guys, so we could identify it to kill it whenever we wanted. And you know, too, you can also come over here and um, write ball stop uh, all actions on something. So let me just comment that out. But uh, let's see what uh, monstrosity we've created now. Some blinking ball. So there you go. 
Well, you know what? This is a good end point for session one. So I'm going to leave this file pretty much as is. I just made it so that that uh, ball doesn't fade out entirely. But uh, you know what? I think we have uh, we've done some pretty momentous things for uh, one day here. And uh, I think the nice thing is, is that we have not had to worry about any sort of uh, real memory in here. Because with Cocos, uh, everything we've done so far has... Uh, not really been stored, well, things that have been stored in memory get auto-released, and even those actions are auto-release um, objects for you, so you don't have to worry about that. So again, here's there's nothing we had to put into our dialic, and we didn't have to do all that stuff that we did in my original series, which was a lot of like setting up the app property and then synthesizing. So there you go for those of you that uh, have continued with me <laughs> and... Uh, were with me the first time around. You can see why I, I do feel like this is a, a little bit easier to use. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll work our way back to using Coco again, I'm sure, for some, some part of this uh, entire series. But at least so far, we uh, kind of kept things casual, if you know what I'm saying. So anyway, uh, session two, we're going to do that, uh, that flip book. And hopefully uh, you got a cousin <laughs> or <laughs> somebody who's already written a an awesome children's book that you can just use the course and then upload that to the store. So anyway, that's what is ahead.